What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie and this is Hustle and Grow. So today I got a few topics I just wanted to go over. First is because I've been writing down a list of all the different ways that I'm trying to save money. And one of course is one of my biggest expenses throughout the year, which is shipping. That's one of my biggest costs, probably second, if not more than my cost of goods, it just depends. I gotta see. My accountant ain't done with all my numbers yet, but once he is, I'll see which one of those are at the top. But if you've been using eBay shipping for items over 16 ounces, even with your discount, I'm here to tell you right now that you need to check those against the rates I power ship. First of all, eBay doesn't do priority cubic. They don't do parcel select cubic. And, and I found that a lot of items that go UPS through Pirate Ship are also cheaper than eBay. Now, this isn't in every single instance. However, I'm finding that in a good majority of instances, I'm saving a good amount of money, a dollar, two dollars, probably not really more than two bucks. But like if you're shipping out a lot of stuff and I'm shipping out thousands and thousands of items a year, that can add up to thousands of dollars, right? Even if you save a dollar per item and you ship out 2,000 items, well, well, you probably won't all your items. Well, who knows? Maybe all your items will go priority or, or, or over that 16 ounce mark. So in that case, you know, you will save $2,000. But either way, what I'm saying is if you got a budget, whether you got a budget or not, if you know your numbers, you should always be trying to cut costs in a way that doesn't degrade your, the customer experience, right? You never want to cut costs in a way that is um, detrimental to the customer. And in a way that won't, you know, in, in a way that won't cause your efficiency or, or, or anything like that to suffer either. You know what I mean? But for sure, man, I, I want to say maybe seven, eight out of ten times when I check power ship for rates on my items that's going out over 16 ounces. Once I start hitting that priority slash range where I can use UPS and stuff, I have found that the power ship, either the priority uh, cubic is cheaper but a lot of times that UPS rate is coming in um, a, good, a lot cheaper than what eBay is offering. So you got to check that, man. You got to. And a good thing about that is that once you got your um, eBay account hooked up to it, it's a pretty seamless um, interaction. You know, you just go ahead, you import the order or orders and you just go ahead and buy the shipping and Empower Ship will automatically mark that item and ship on eBay for you too. So it's not like you're doing a whole ton of work or anything like that. So check that out, save you some money if you haven't already. Other thing that I've come up with is this, because eBay has been dragging foot on their um, whole thing that they was t been talking about making people who give you offers to, you know, making it so where if, they, if you accept the offer, you know, they have to pay immediately. Not just that, but just customers in general who purchase your items and decide that, hey, you know, I don't want to pay for three or four days or I don't want to pay at all. So what I'm doing now, when here's what I've been doing. Any item that hasn't been paid after 24 hours, okay, I send them a message. Okay, I give them one day. I send them a message. I say something to the effect of, hey, thank you for your purchase. However, we have not received payment yet for this item, so please pay you know, please pay for this item within the next 24 hours or we'll cancel the order on your behalf. And that's pretty much it. I'm pretty nice about it. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for your purchase. We haven't received a payment yet. So please pay for this order within the next 24 hours or we're going to cancel this order on your behalf. And so if a person is really serious about getting the item, they'll get the message. And if they genuinely forgot or something about, oh, dang, my bad, which I have had a couple people do and they pay. Right. If they're not they're not going to pay. That's two days altogether right there. Right. You get the one day just in case, you know, you got it. You left. You forgot about it, whatever. You get the reminder. And then the day after that, I'm not going to keep that. Number one is hurting me. Right. My items off the off the site. Heck, I might even forget that they didn't pay for it and it gets canceled and not relisted which has happened a few times. Sometimes I catch it because I'll go through my emails and see if I get that you canceled the order email from eBay. And that's usually how I just double check and then re-enter my quantity for that item. But I'm, I, I figured I got to be proactive about this. And so that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And I send that and if I don't, and then they don't answer that message or if they don't purchase that item after that 24 hours after I send that notice, 
I cancel the order and I say buyer asked to cancel because I told them in the message, I'm canceling on your behalf. And if they got something going on that bad where they can't even come back two days after they um, started a purchase, then, you know, you can come back later if the item's still there and get it. But that's kind of how I'm doing that. I'm not sure <laughs> if uh, how I'm trading as far as, you know, eBay's rules go. But I mean, I figure since I put put it in the message that I am going to cancel on their behalf by me saying that the buyer canceled. I mean, I feel like, you know, silence is consent. <laughs> if you don't answer me, you're consenting that I can cancel this order on your behalf. So that's that on that. Right. I don't know. That's just me, man. Have you done anything like that? Let me know in the comments. If not, what do you think about that idea? Me, I'm going to do it regardless. I don't even care. That's pretty much what I'm going to do. And if I have to cancel the order, then I'll just go in immediately and, and double check the quantities. That way I can stop having these issues with um, items not being relisted, with letting items just linger. And, and another thing I even notice is this. And, I, and it always just makes me wonder, right? I'll, I'll, I'll list some items, right? I might have some items listed. And they're usually going to be... A lot of times it's multi quantities and it's usually I don't want to say expensive item, but like higher dollar value. You know what I mean? And somebody will come along. Right. And they'll either make me an offer. That's a decent, a fair offer for either all of them or a good amount of them. Right. Or they'll, they'll, they'll start the buying process. But then after I accept the offer and or they start that buying process, they sit in that waiting for payment, you know, purgatory. Right. And it always just makes me wonder because a good amount of the time is usually a person that has little feedback. Now, okay, now let's just say, let's say I got an item that's selling for 15, 20 bucks. Somebody make me an offer for five of them, right? And I accept the offer. Or, or I, first thing I'll do is I'll look at their feedback. Now, if they got low feedback, I don't even, I usually just decline the offer or I'll, I just won't even respond to it. It just depends, right? Because sometimes you decline and then they'll just keep sending the damn offer back. Then I, I've had to go block people for that before. But um, for instance, I got um, some health and, a health and beauty product up. The product itself, I want to say, sell them for $19.99. I think I got three or four of them up. So this seller sent me an offer for $15 each. And I started to just accept it because I'm like, that's a fair enough offer, right? 15 from 1999, but they want it all of them. Then I look at the feedback. The feedback is eight. Which ain't, I mean, you know, it ain't that bad. So then what I did is after I seen the feedback, I said, all right, well, let me go check the profile. I went and checked the profile. Now, they, that eight feedback, they haven't had any feedback in over a year. So like, I don't know, I call me paranoid, man, or suspicious. But I didn't accept the offer and I just kept pushing because I've had too many instances where that happens and I accept the offer and they never pay for the item or then there's a problem after the purchase all of a sudden. It always makes me wonder, is it like a competitor, you know, trying some stuff? But it just seems weird like... You ain't been on eBay in a year. I don't know. It could be legit and it could just be a person who ain't been on there in a year and came across it and wanted to buy it. Either way, I've had enough bad experiences on eBay in those types of situations that it just makes me want to avoid it. I feel like if you want them that bad, just buy them at that point. I got a multi-quantity discount on there, but nah, I ain't do it. You know, that's kind of how I've been dealing with that. And even despite the fact, and, and just with eBay in general, one of the things I've been doing is because I'm making Amazon and Walmart more of my focus this year. If I'm not listing some, I'm not listing anything on eBay unless it meets a few different criteria. One of those criteria is listing price has to be at least $10 or more. Okay. Unless I have multi quantity. Now I'm just saying, of course, this doesn't go for all my items that are already listed. And there's even items that's up there that's not selling really and it don't really sell for much at all that I'm going through. I'm taking them all down. I'm just going to sell them all in a lot. I don't know. I'll put them up on marketplace, get rid of them cheap. Just get rid of them because number one, they're not selling. I can see if they were selling, but they're not even selling and they don't sell for that much. So I'm taking those down, getting those out of the way. So I'm reducing my profile now aspect, but also if, if, if something's less than $10, it has to have multi quantity. So unless I have at least five units or more, I'm not even listening on eBay 
unless it sells for $10 or more. So I think it's going to be those two criteria in general. Like it has to sell for $10 or more firstly, right? But if it is under $10, I have to have like, you know, a good amount of them. Be so, to, you know, I'll put them up on eBay, Walmart if I can, and, and Amazon too if I can. Depends on if I can sell them on there. But, uh, and, and then the other criteria would just be like, if I got something that's kind of damaged or slightly imperfect or anything like that, then yeah, I'll put it up there if it is worth it. If it is worth it. If it's not worth it, then I ain't doing it. Uh, eBay is just taking too much time. There's just too many issues as far as the, the, the whole buying process with the buyers. And I like eBay. I ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? I'm definitely not going nowhere. I'm definitely going to keep my um, eBay store going because it does have it does have a, a, a purpose. But I just have to take into account how much time it takes compared to those other platforms. And the fact that those other platforms, you know, the sales velocity is two, three, four times faster um, for a lot of the items. Not every single item, of course, but for a lot of the items, it's just better. You know, there's and what I have been doing, I was like I was doing a listing on eBay and then I would cross post over to Walmart, maybe Amazon. It just depends. And. It'd be, it be done sold on eBay or, or it, it would have sold on Walmart and or Amazon and it's just sitting on eBay. I've taken I've gone through all my inventory multiple times and I just continue to take what's ever been selling on eBay, posting it on Walmart, posting it on Walmart and it's selling. Boom, boom. It's gone. It's gone. I'm talking about stuff that haven't been moving for a long, long time. And I just ain't got the time to deal with that, man. And, and especially for items that don't sell for a large margin. You know what I mean? I need those things to be gone ASAP. So that's, that's going to be my approach with eBay is when it comes to non-paying customers, you get 24 hours before I send you the, the message. After the message, you get another 24 hours. After that, I'm canceling on their behalf and I'm relisting my item and moving on. And I'm not listing nothing that's under 10 bucks unless it's multi-quantities. And it's worth it. And I'm um, going through my store and just taking down everything that hasn't been selling and it don't even sell for that much anyway and just redoing everything. I'm not sure if I'm going to have and put everything together for like a yard sale or if I'm just going to put it in a big box and offer it up on Facebook for like 10 bucks. I don't know. But I need to clear a room anyway. And there's just some things in this whole place that I kind of want to do to maximize the space that I got anyway. So uh, another thing eBay's been doing is if you've been listing any sort of, uh, you know, bug repellent, right? Off bug repellent or anything like that. eBay's been requiring that you put the EPA number in there, okay? Now, I had a few listings pulled down initially because of this, right? And I'm like, what the heck? But they never gave me a violation or strike on my account. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I go back, I put the, you, well, they say, if the item doesn't, and, and, and what, it, what I'm noticing is, for the most part, it looks like any types of bug repellent. I, I, um, bug repellent are like uh, weed killer, that type of stuff, right? Um, then they say if it doesn't have an EPA number on there, then you can't list it at all. So I'm like, okay. I go back for the ones that I knew that had EPA, EPA numbers. I put the EPA numbers in. They ended up taking one down. It's an off... Uh, bug killer for for weeds and stuff right for your garden i don't know something like that right so i'm like you know i put the epa number in there it's on the um item and i took a picture of it in the listing but then i'm like you know what i ain't even tripping i ain't even worried about it i'm gonna just take them i'm gonna probably just throw them up on facebook i think i got like three or four of them I'm just throw them up on marketplace man and just get rid of them that way but then i just got another message from them they took another item down, but this one I actually had sold already. This was a uh, Murphy's, Murphy's oil like bug repellent type of thing. This had already sold weeks ago. They actually took that down, same thing. And what they use is they say like, it, it goes against their item description policy that an item must be described properly, um, so on and so forth. I did a video about this already, but, uh, and I'm just like, first of all, this listing sold, number one, number two, that item has the EPA number in it because that was one of the items that I had went back and I added the EPA number. So now I'm going to have to get them a call. I know what they're going to say. Sorry, whatever. You know, you can relist those items, which I'm not about to relist them. I don't even care that much, you know. Um, but my thing is, 
Okay, it's one thing to say you got to put this number in, and if it's not in, you can't list it. So another thing, like, I did this twice already, and I put the number in, and y'all still taking them down. So I need to know what's going on with that, man, because this is just starting to get ridiculous. And this is the thing, I'm, this is what I'm talking about, right? You know, I already got to deal with the fact that if I don't list every day, I don't get a lot of traffic. I got customers that you know, pay basically whenever they feel like it. Uh, you know, I gotta deal with all this stuff. And then there's these other little things that eBay adds. It's just like, I don't gotta deal with that on Amazon and Walmart. I don't have to deal with non-paying customers. When they buy the item, they buy the item. And it's for the price that it's listed at, you know? Uh, Walmart doesn't have a way to add a coupon right now. Amazon does, but I mean, for the most part, the price is the price on those platforms. I don't have to deal with my stuff waiting in purgatory for, you know, wondering if a buyer is going to pay. I don't have to worry about my traffic isn't, isn't contingent upon whether or not I listed that day. You know, it's, it's, it's contingent upon supply and demand. If the supply is there and the demand is there and my price is right, the customer is going to buy the product. That's what it should be like. I don't know. I, I just get, I'm, I'm just starting to value my time a whole lot more, especially since I'm trying to do a whole lot more. And I'm realizing in trying to do those things that there's things slowing me down. You know, uh, some of them related to platforms like eBay. Some of them not. Some of them are my, of my own doing. And they're just things I got to get better at, become more efficient at. And, and I got to manage my own time better. And that's one of the things that I've been working on is just trying to manage my own time better. Anyway, I ain't going to make this video too, too long, man. But make sure you guys check out Power Ship for any item that's over 16 ounces. I think you're going to save a lot of money. And if you don't have your eBay account already integrated with, with that, make sure you do that. Also, you might want to try the whole payment reminder thing for people. Man, stop letting people just, you know, put your, put their stuff in layaway. If they, if they, two days is way more than enough time for you to pay for an item. And if you can't, I'm canceling it and, and I'm, I'm moving on, man. But do me a favor, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so the next time I upload another video, you'll be one of the first to be notified.